off. This is the first time uh, we have ever done a podcast. And hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm I'm joined by my beautiful wife Steph, and I thank you for that. I think it's very um, it's something that we've talked about doing now for quite a while, and it's we are looking at it as another way to um, get information out on different uh, a different way, I guess, of delivering a message. And obviously, it's going to be directed around dog dog training. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. We've put it off a long time. So I think one of the things that'll be interesting with this is I don't know exactly how it's going to take shape because I think it's one of those things that um, I've listened. I didn't listen to podcasts until you started. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know how many months ago. <laughs> you listen to them. She, you know, Steph listens to them all the time, <clears throat> has turned turned me on to certain ones and and giving me some direction with what I think what she thinks would help me I find them to be um, great for my travel and, and a way for me to get a bunch of information but I'll be honest with you some of them I'm not that big on and some of them I really find valuable so my hope with ours is a we're going to be able to provide value but I think we have to figure out how we're going to do that in the best way so these first few I think are going to be experiments for us and figure out the best format on how we do it. I, I'm long-winded. My intro already is long-winded. But <laughs> I think that um, these are going to be, we're going to attempt to keep them as short and concise and, and specific on maybe less topics, more in-depth on them um, to start out with. So I think, what do you think, I, I guess? Well, I, I think one of the big things that we struggle with, because I see firsthand how many messages you get, how many emails you get, how many phone calls you get, text messages, and there's so many similarities between all of the questions. Yep. And our issue right now is that there's so many different platforms, whether it's DMs on Instagram or people on Snapno or Facebook, and all of these questions are coming from all over the place, and you answer them, and you're so good with that. And we just have no way right now of being able to organize all of that content. And I love organization. You know that. Totally. (laughs) So I I think an easy way for us to be able to do this is to have something that we can obviously title to make sense, but lay out these questions, whether they are from Instagram or Facebook or people calling you. We can pick these questions, make a topic, talk about it, have a short, concise podcast. So when you do get these similar questions, it's an easy place that you can send somebody to to answer. I think so too. And I think that one of the things, you know, I've been a part of podcasts more recently, several, I guess, and I really enjoy them. I like them first off because they're pretty free. They're pretty open. I think some of the stuff that we've done in the past, we use, we're trying to figure out the best way to use the different platforms. Facebook live works really well for us in the live with spry series that has evolved into like 125 live segments of training this dog if you look back on them it's funny because the first one number one is us sitting in our living room was right when facebook live came out and we just were experimenting to see what it was about and how it worked (laughs) and that is exactly what we did and then like two days later someone said why don't you sent a message and said why don't you show some more stuff with that little puppy so we did and then we didn't do it again, and then someone else. And so when people started asking for it, it turned into Live with Spry. It didn't start out as Live with Spry. Now we're, you know, we've got a little bit of a rhythm with it, and we we understand like the value in it. I think that this is probably going to take the same path because I don't know exactly how. I don't know exactly what the best f- flow is going to be as far as. I think you're right. The questions are. Re- I was going to say ridiculous. Like they're not ridiculous. <laughs> they're they're real there's it's ridiculous how many are coming. It also tells me that's why I need to answer more. Like because if people are willing to and able to answer or ask these questions, well then there's people that are willing to listen. So that's that's where I think we come to this. So I think the other thing is is I would like to try to use it at some point. I'm going to look at using it as um a way for us to when things come up, when things are on my mind, when things certain things come up um, day to day with the dog stuff, this is going to be a great place for me to be able to dump it, like my ideas and my thoughts. And so I don't know exactly how how regular we'll do them. I hope to do them really regular, and I think it'll be dictated by how they're received and how, how things. I think it's a 
it's one thing that I have learned that all, everything we do is a slow process. Like, so I, I envision this uh, to continue to kind of snowball and grow. So that's, that's kind of my plan with it. And I think you're on board with me. It is a slow process, much like dog training, right? Yeah, and, 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 it's a, and, it, and that's a great example of there has to be patience involved. And if anyone has followed any of our stuff, whether it be on, on Facebook or a live like at a, a seminar or any of that stuff, now I've got my mom calling me 50 times on the phone here, but uh, it is my birthday today. So the big oh, first, the podcast big first day, big first day podcast, 26th birthday, and uh, <laughs> 26 again. And and mom really wants to talk, so uh, we'll have to call her back. But so I think I think we start out that way, and uh, we go from there. So I am going to. I don't know. What do I you think? I think the easiest way to do it is if I read you a question and like you said before it's very easy for you to get long-winded which I think people do appreciate because it's usually good content but I think we also need to to be concise with things so I'll yeah. read a question and then if you want to pick out maybe your favorite piece of it or something that you feel like would be most beneficial to explain and we can just yeah from because there. because some of these questions that I get are really easy uh, relatively easy, simple fixes. Um, some of them are three sentences I type back. Some of them are freaking books, like long and hard to do. So I think that's how we'll steer it too. Uh, we kind of have one picked out that I think is has has multiple parts to it, which will probably take up the amount of time that we want to spend. Um, I've actually got ideas of like having people call and I'm going to actually talk to some people because I've gotten some questions that are so much I can't write an answer back. It'll take me so long. So um, we'll see where that goes. But I agree. So for the first one, I'll let you run with it. All right. You ready for this, Mr. Moore? Well, as ready as I'll ever <laughs> You're be. You're born ready, honey. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So first question to kick off our dog bone podcast. I've got an 18-month-old golden that I had high hopes for. Then I had some other life things take precedence and completely neglected any sort of training with him. In your honest opinion, is he too old to begin training? He's as raw as they come. If he's simply a companion, I'm fine with that. And I'm concerned that may be the case, given most people have their pups working on finding a bone at just a few months old. I'm just looking for your professional opinion. Okay. So a one-and-a-half-year-old dog, so, yeah, not trained. Great. So it's a, first <laughs> off, it's a great question. There's a lot, it's a great question because... I think there's a lot of people that are in the boat of, and it, and it probably touches on multiple questions, the idea of they don't necessarily have a puppy. And so when I say puppy, most people think small enough you can pick them up and uh, you know, you're know you working on crate training and that kind of stuff, real, real basic stuff. And so my answer first off is I call them puppies till they're two. So, And I don't think it's a two-year-old birthday where all of a sudden they turn into a dog. I think it's on average, in general, the idea of physically they mature much earlier than they do mentally. And I think what we need to do is understand that. It's different. Like I always talk, I make a lot of comparisons to raising dogs. Instead of training dogs, I talk about raising them, similar to how we raise kids. We don't take um, kids, bring them home, and set aside 10 to 15 minutes a day to train them. Instead, we just incorporate it into our life. Like your kid comes home, you start to put good habits in early, you're con it's constant and ongoing. There's no breaks. You don't just you don't get windows of opportunity to raise kids and the rest of the day you do what you want, let the kids do what they want. It's just ongoing. So I like to adapt or adopt that thought process when it comes to these puppies. And you see it when we bring dogs in, like it's it's always going. It's always we're always trying to work on forming something good and avoiding bad stuff. So with this guy, 18 month old pup or and it's a pup and he's wondering is it too late for me to train him and and so first off the easy answer is absolutely not i still think an 18 month old puppy is a puppy and very very trainable now my and he's he's not necessarily he's not talking about just sheds right he's talking what do you say you wanted to bird hunt with it um no he said that if it was just coming down to a companion a dog, dog he would okay. be okay with that so, but He's comparing himself because he said that he sees other pups that yes. are finding bones already at just a few months yep. old, and bones, I'm assuming, sheds. Sheds. So, so, he, so, so there's like four questions in there. And so the first one is really easy. This is a cut and dry. No, it's not too late. 
So the second thing is, and, I, and all the reasons before are why. The second thing is, when you start talking about, read me that second part again. What was he at? What did he say? Um, he just said, is he too old to begin training? He's as raw as they come. So there wasn't necessarily a second question. Okay. He's just so, concerned about where to go from here and if it's too late to get started. So I think, I think a lot of times people have the idea that, no, okay, I remember what I was going to say. So, so he's so 18 months old. He's a puppy, but at the same time, 18 months old, like you, he probably brought this pup home when it was like seven or eight weeks old. So it was two months, right? So now it's nine months. So you've got seven months. No, it's more it's than that. Eight, it's a year and a half. Ele- a year. So, 18 months. So he's got 14 months. Okay, dog comes home, eight weeks old, right? Two months two old. Months. 18, I'm doing Six, my math here. 16, 16 months. months. So he's got a year and four months. He's usually the good one at math too. Late in the, late in the day, long day. So 14 months you have of potential habits that have been put into the dog. That's, I think, really what you have to... And, and he's saying he's as raw as he can be. Well, as far as hunting goes, raw is usually not bad because usually we screw things up with training more than the dogs have inherent in them. Hunting comes very natural. It's the foundation. And so the foundation needs to come before the hunt. So when I when, this is kind of tying back into the end of his question when he says, you know, he sees a bunch of dogs that are however many months old and they're finding sheds early on or they're taking them on hunts you see that stuff all the time you see people talking about that all the time and the reality of it is is i don't buy it most of the time but that's okay if if that's if that's the reality that those people have that's fine my belief is this guys i don't care if my dog is two years old before i take it on its first hunt two years old so back way up this guy's got six months to catch up to me like he can get a lot of stuff done in six months before I even worry about taking my dog. I got Ellie this year is going to shed hunt. She's two and a half years old. Last year she went, she was a year and a half. I didn't even look at it like hunting. I looked at it as another opportunity for training into the field. That's all it was. So we have to realize that there is no time constraints on how quickly you get your dog to hunt. I think if you rush your dog to hunt, if you take the dogs to hunt too early, you potentially and more often than not create more issues than you would if you were just patient and took an extra season off a full season so like a year if you're hunting in the fall take that fall off okay so if you're if your dog is put into perspective with some of the dogs we're training right now spry turned one in december so there's a lot of people that would have gotten that puppy last we you know she was born in december so we it was february when i started training her so it's probably about a year ago actually that live with spry started and so there's a lot of people that would have took that puppy that was born in december start training them at say seven weeks in february and look at that and go good i have plenty of time to get it ready for the hunt this fall i didn't think i didn't have to think twice about it there was no no part of me that said I have to hunt spry this fall because the reality is she just wasn't ready she wasn't where I felt she needed to be to go in the field and hunt so I didn't and right now and the reason I didn't is and you can look back on all that live with spry stuff but hell I didn't make a retrieve with her until she was eight or nine months old like a good one and it wasn't even that good but it took a long time with her to get where I felt she would have needed to be or even getting close to be to the point where she'd go in the field she just wasn't ready so now, fast forward a couple months. So now it's been a year and two months. So she's 14 months old. She's got a really nice foundation. I'm going to be able to get into some really nice stuff in the field with her. And next fall, next spring, she's going to be ready. Like, And she's going to not only be ready, but she's going to do very, very well as long as I transition her to it. I won't even be in a hurry to get her through the second year. So now you're going, wait a minute, the dog's two years old and you're not even in a hurry to get it into the field to hunt? Surprise going to live to probably be 14, 13 to 15 years old, I would say. I'll probably hunt her till she's 12 or 13, ideally. So I look at the numbers and I go, I might give up two seasons of hunt with Spry. And if I get 12 good seasons of hunt out of her, how many does that leave me? 10. I'll have 10 years of hunting over a really nice dog. Or I could have pushed to get through the first season and have some hunt out of it. And then it probably would have set me way back in my training and I would have struggled to get her where I wanted her to be at the second year. If I, This is if I'm consistent enough and persistent enough to stick with it. Because a lot of people get frustrated in that period, time period and go, dog just doesn't have it. So 
the longest answer ever to that question. <laughs> but so the the rush is not there. So 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 I'm gonna really make a point of of using every opportunity that I have to explain to people this thing is a marathon, not a sprint. And that's how we have to approach it with our with our training, with our transition to hunt, with everything we do. And that's on the big picture and the small. So like back it up a little bit. Now he's 18 months old. You know where I'd tell him to start? I'd start in the beginning. Because if he's 18 months old or he's 18 weeks old or he's 18 years old, you have to start in the beginning. And that's the only way you get to the end is starting in the beginning. But you can't go from the beginning to the end. You go from the beginning to a little bit past the beginning to a little bit past the beginning to a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. A to B, B to C, C to D, we get to Z instead of A to Z. That's just how dogs work. So, so this guy, 18 months, nah, no worries. Start in the foundation. The struggle you might have is when you say extremely raw and you might not have any foundation. So now you have to build the foundation. And my approach to that is the same whether it's seven weeks old or seven months old. You start, you, I, now you physically you can't hold that dog, can't pick it up. Like, but I would feed that dog under control. I'd have the dog sit before he gets to eat. Build steadiness. Build. And the, here's the other thing. The other question is, is he'd be happy with it being a family dog? Well, the foundation, in order to have, be, have it be a good, found, a good family dog, the foundation is what's going to allow you to do that. Not the, not the hunt stuff. Not any. I mean, most people would take a dog that behaves, like he's saying, any day of the week. Because the majority of the time, this guy probably doesn't hunt. But 12 months out of the year, he's got himself a family dog, right? Mm-hmm. So... Now, I, I would say then, circling back, because when I look at this question and I think about it, I think that was a fantastic answer. You answered it short by saying, yes, you can still do it. But then also that would be the next question that he would probably have is, okay, I can do it, now what? So going back to our foundation, and I think of when we do our workshops, for example, there's people that bring two-year-old dogs and they are wild. Totally. And they message you first and say, I don't think I can come to this workshop. Or they come with the opposite mentality that they're just there to learn how to find sheds. But yeah. by day two, they come and it's a wild dog and they're healing. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, so and I, I guess my, if, if I were this person then asking the question, and it just kind of goes back, I think, to the, instead of training dogs, you're training trainers like you talk about all the time. What would be his first step then yeah. at, at so, this point? So I think, I think you're right. I think like with, with the workshops, people bring in dogs that are hot, like a lot of go, a lot of zip, a lot of drive, a ton of go, 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 go. And I think people go. With no I, manners. Well, exactly. Exactly. There's we no, like well-mannered dogs. Here's, here, here's the thing though. I think people are, I think people are led to believe i've i mean i see it i read it and and there's a lot of different ideas on it but specifically for for hunting dogs let's just talk because we're talking shed hunting we're talking birds whatever for hunting dogs i can't tell you how many times i've seen comments and 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 things especially through social media with the idea of the way to get a good one the only the the good ones are the ones that the most drive, the most go, the most retrieve. Now, my question is, what the hell are you doing with those dogs? Because there's very few dogs out there that don't have enough to go. It's most have too much. Or we don't. We try to ramp them up, tighten the screws down so tight on these dogs that they, boom, are ready to blow up. It, that's like buying a sports car for a five-person family. It doesn't fit. I really believe that the hunt part is in them. We bring it out of them. It's the rest of the stuff. So when you brought up the idea of we like well-mannered dogs, I like I like athletes that are freaks, just freaks. Like I like basketball players that can jump out of the gym. I like football players that can run really, really fast. Professional sports teams pick the most elite athletes in the world. First off, I'm not a professional sports team when it comes to my dogs. Like family dog for me first, hunting dog in the seasons, yes. But... The majority of these types of dogs, if they're wound that tight, like I make comparisons that some of these, like American field trials are, are really impressive and they're athletic dogs. They are way too much dog for most people. They're bred that way. They're bred, they're, it's, it's intentional. I think people look to try to ramp these guys up, ramp these dogs up, ramp these dogs up to the point where we lose control. Here's what I like. I like well-disciplined dogs. And when I say discipline, I don't mean like scared. 
I don't mean like it's a fear tactic thing. I don't have to be physically violent to be have a dog be disciplined. When I say discipline, I think a lot of people think of discipline as negatives. Like, I'm really hard on them. I say discipline, and I use this, I've used this analogy all the time. Like, I like Steph Curry in the NBA. He's a very, very good basketball player, right? But he's very disciplined on and off the court. He's an excellent example of what I could point a kid to and say, that guy right there is extremely disciplined. The reason he's disciplined is because he works harder than most. Like, he works out. He's not an athletic freak. So he has to do it. He's got extreme talent, but he's got to do a lot of things physically to be sure that he's stronger, faster, quicker, because he's naturally just not there. But he's extremely disciplined, and he doesn't make bad decisions on the court. He doesn't make bad decisions off the court. He's got good manners. Like, he, he doesn't get it. He's not one of these guys you see here getting in trouble very often. I like dogs that are well-disciplined, like Steph Curry is well-disciplined. I like dogs that have some talent. The beauty about dogs are most of them have it. Almost all of them have it. It's genetics. It's been put into them for hundreds of years. Most of the time when dogs don't do well, it's us that screw them up. It's us as trainers that don't bring out. My job as a trainer with a dog is get the most out of it I possibly can. And that's natural stuff that's in it. I'm just trying to figure out how to get it out. And the problem is is I even fall short. I don't get the most out of my dogs. I try to get as much as I can. And I think a lot of people, this comes back to the idea that we were talking about before where we said, you know, can you do it in one year? Can you do it? If if I pass a season and I wait to hunt the next season, I'm fine with it. Most people don't have that level of patience because we want stuff. We want stuff pretty quickly. This guy, this guy has got an 18 month old puppy. It's a puppy. So if if someone is at home right now listening to this and they've got 18 months is old, is relatively old for people to realize and and question the idea of do I still have time? I've had people send me messages that have 4 and 5 month old dogs that aren't picking up sheds in the wild yet and they're wondering if this dog has a chance. And I'm going when I take a 4 year old to basketball practice and he doesn't handle the ball as well as the college players do I don't go, I just don't think he's going to make it. We'll have to look for something else for Junior to do here. Like, it takes an incredible amount in understanding that patience is what you need to have. Patience is what, for a lot of people that don't have it, patience is what having dogs will help them with. It'll help them develop some patience. If they're willing to adapt the idea and are willing to say, you know what? I'm going to, how many times do you hear me go, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003? You haven't always like, done that. <laughs> no, right, right. No, I, I haven't. And, and quite honestly, I've gotten better with patience over the years. I'm still not great. I hear a lot of people say, oh, you got, you're so patient. Sometimes, maybe, with some things I am. A lot of times I'm not. I'm, I, I'm really aware of that. And there's a lot of times where I literally... I did it the other day. I did a Snapchat of a dog that I wanted. I said, I jokingly said something about like, I'd like to rip her head off right now. Like I would. And I, and I did want to at that moment. And I went on and I did a little story about it. And I, I, on Snapchat or whatever. And I said, this dog really is making me mad right now. And so I'm, I'm fuming. I really want to punt her. But isn't that the movie where he wanted to punt the dog? He punted Baxter. I, I wanted to punt her. <laughs> There's Anchorman. And so I was upset, but I also, but I used that and I went, I can get really upset or I can put her on her lead and heal her up the driveway under control and maybe salvage something out of this little session. So when things go bad, which they do quite often, I figure out, I have to a lot of times go 1,001, 1,002. By the time I say 1,003, and I literally will say it out loud, by the time I say 1,003, I almost it's almost a little bit funny to go, Today's, I'm 38 years old today. I'm a 38-year-old man, and I'm counting to 1,003 to up to, before <laughs> just to let my steam out. And so, so that's reality. I mean, the question is, is, are you willing to do it? Are you able to do it? So Yeah. I, so, think, I think circling back on this then, just to wrap it up, what, what I think of, and we talk about it all the time, is we're not training dogs, we're raising dogs just like we raise kids. And in this instance, his question is he has an 18-month-old dog. Essentially, that's like saying, I have a 
nine, ten year old kid that's acting out. Getting into has, trouble. Hasn't yeah. been trained much. He's not going to do anything with his life. He's done for. Yep. I, you, I didn't have him the first. Don't write nine off your kids. Of don't write life. off your dog. Right. So it, it's not any different than that, right? I agree. I, yes. And so, I I think that what was the end of his thing? What else did he say? Um. I he, thought there was he's one. He's just comparing to the dogs that yeah, are ahead. That's, with, this is they're the other a couple thing. months old and they're finding sheds. And but I, we can answer that in a different. I'm just going to touch on it real quick. All right, all right, babe. I, I know you hate it, when I, <laughs> but I think it, I want to complete this guy's thing. So the yeah. question came through. So here, here, this is the quick and easy on that. I am all about the idea of celebrating the little victories. I think when when dogs do something well, let's celebrate it. I I, I linger on the the negatives too often sometimes, and I don't celebrate the little victories. I really think you have to when your dog does something well, celebrate it. Remember how it feels because it's not going to feel good soon and you got to remember what it feels like when you do accomplish stuff with them so i think that's great and i think it's 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 something that you should focus on but i also think here's the here's the the really clear answer to that last part about he's seen other dogs at so many so few months and they're finding antlers here's here's what you have to worry about you and your dog don't worry about anybody else's stuff like you could, we could, we could make that analogy to anything in our lives. Like, oh, uh, they, <laughs> they did it over there. Look at what they've got. Look at how they did. Look at, who cares? Well, like, I think it's I, hard on social media nowadays because it's, it's real hard. highlight reel, and all of a sudden their dog. You're only walks seeing the good right stuff. Right over a shed, and they go, "Look at my dog found a shed," and it and, might not have even known where right. it was. Right, and and there's very few people that'll show some of the stuff. That, when Ellie found her first shed. It took her 10 minutes and she tripped on it twice. <laughs> I, I, I think she poked herself with it accidentally on because she ran over the top of it. And the second she found it, I poured on praise. It's all about timing. So I poured on praise. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Boom, she brings it back to me. I showed it live. There was no hiding it. I could have filmed it. And I could have showed the last 10 seconds of it where she picked it up and brought it back to me. But the reality is, is there was a lot of other stuff that went into it. Now, I'm not saying other people's... If other people have that ability and, and are getting those kind of results, I think it's great. Celebrate the idea of it. I'm happy for them. I really am. But I'm certainly not going to hold myself to feel lesser because it's taking me a little bit longer. I don't. The reality is we have to quit worrying about what everyone else's stuff looks like. And maybe I have to focus more on what my stuff looks like and not be negative about what my stuff. Here's the thing. Training these dogs, the journey is as much fun as the destination when I get there. I have more fun working through some of the stuff that I work through in the first two to three years of the dog than I do four or five years into the hunt. So you have to, you have to, you have to be okay with that. Let's not worry about, I don't care what everyone else's dogs look like. And, and, and it's not that I am negative about it either. If someone else has a six month old dog that found a shed, God, that's awesome. That's really good. When my dog finds one and it's six years old and it's its first, I'll be just as happy, maybe even more. So mm-hmm. I don't think you can worry about that stuff. You gotta let you, you just you can't let it bug you. You yeah, have to focus on your own stuff. Just because he's ready to start. I mean, you see totally. that so many times where people aren't even willing to put the. There's a lot of people in. who would have written this dog off by 18 months. Exactly. And so, so the easy answer, man, start in the beginning. You gotta start in the beginning, and 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 your process will look the same as it will if it's a, uh, you know, if it's a seven week old puppy. You know, the foundation, our foundation DVD talks about four things. Heal, sit, stay, and come when I call you. That's a lot of information about very few subjects. And it's because I feel so strongly about those few subjects. You have to have that stuff. So that's it. And we're under under <laughs> the 30-minute mark. And you said it would go to 35 if we stopped at 25 or tried to stop at 25. So the long-windedness will end on the podcast I will continue to be long-winded on our Facebook, on our Instagram, <laughs> on our Snapchat, in our lives when we do seminars. So those are all great places to get more of this information. It's all at Dogbone Hunter. I- yeah, and, and we appreciate you guys so much. And this is our first podcast, obviously, together. And we're a married couple, so I'm sure we'll stumble and we'll, we'll come across There'll be plenty things of that. You'll be able to witness all of it. But if you liked it, Share it with your friends, subscribe, do all the fun stuff that you guys do on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere because we appreciate you and, and we wouldn't be able to do this without all of you and all of your dogs and my beautiful bearded husband across from me yeah, right well, now. So. I, really, I, really, I really think I, I, I like this because my, my idea was I, always want, I wanted to help as many dogs as I could and I realized real quickly I can only touch so many, but I can, I can help way more dogs 
by helping other people. So the idea behind the podcast is the more people that we can get that way and help with their questions. And, and this, this is just going to be another avenue. It's just going to be another way for people to be able to get questions answered in a, a little bit different format and delivery. And our hope is that we're able to train trainers and, and have it so that you guys can enjoy your dogs as much as we do. Because it's really nice when you got dogs that, that are, are able and capable of doing just about anything with. So that's it. And happy birthday, Jerry. <sighs> boy, Babe, oh boy. My love. I really appreciate it. So you guys, I will uh, we'll be back. We're going to do we're going to we're going to continue to do this thing. So thank you. I appreciate it and we will talk again soon. See ya.